<laughs> uh, Wayne, this is absolutely and utterly ridiculous. And I think it is, it is what perpetuates continued um, uh, stereotypes, racism, um, uh, just thought processes that race really matters in life. It really does not because I am a mixed um, a, a person of mi mixed descent. Mm -hmm. what, say, having said that, a role model is exactly whoever a role model, model is because of who they are and what they represent. It has nothing to do with your color. But truth be told, most people feel more comfortable relating to someone that looks like them, mm -hmm. which is the dumbest thing in the world because that has nothing to do with nothing. But you will find out that if you go into a uh, majority white arena for anything, albeit sports or whatever, and you're black, that black person is going to scan that room to try to find another white person. Right. And why? Why does it matter? It should not matter. And you can't say, that's just like saying every football team that has black football players that's not at a black college, they should have a black coach. Right. I mean, the football players are the football players. It doesn't matter. White people should be able to go to black colleges, people. They just don't want to. Big Kenny? <laughs> uh, I think that I agree with Lady T in that being a role model should not be based on your racial ethnicity it should be based on your character but it amazes me how in many of these situations a great many of our ancestors and forefathers fought for equality uh, we go to these institutions to get higher learning so that we can go out and compete in the regular world with everybody else to limit us to exposure to only people from our demographic, I think is limiting those students. Uh, you may go, Steve McNair came from Alcorn State University. Mm -hmm. He goes from Alcorn State to the NFL. You have a white coach in the NFL. You have white coaches. You have white teammates. There's got to be a point where you learn to interact with the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. I mean, this guy's I from apologize Arkansas, for my Arkansas land. Baptist or whatever, that would be equivalent to him saying, okay, I'm working at Arkansas Baptist University. I've got to be a preacher. I've got to be some sort of clergyman. Right. Should the people at a Baptist college only be coached by a Baptist minister? Can you be Catholic and coach there? It it, it just seems limiting to me. And the president of Alcorn State, uh, if I, I think that's the title, the guy that did the interview on Outside the Lines, held, he was saying at this point in 2012, he's pushing to make Alcorn State a great university. Period. He's not really looking at it as far as, uh, how is it, HC? HBCUs. 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 Black He's university. trying to just make a great university at this point. And I, I, when I listen to that, I think what he's saying is, if we continue down this road, how life and society is changing, mm -hmm. there's, you know, in the 100-mile radius of our college, there's a lot of people Based mm -hmm. because we're not dealing with color that are not coming to our university, mm -hmm. and you've seen a lot of black colleges struggle struggle because, uh, you know, people are deciding to go other places. I don't think we it's kids not are not about raised black on black, right. white kids are not white. necessarily yes. raised thinking I need to go to a black college anymore. As much as it is, I need to go to college. I know in my experience, I went to Auburn. My head football coach was Pat Dye, who was a white man. Uh, he taught me things about being a man. I never saw it as it's a white man teaching me how no. to be a man. I and thought it was never. just this is a guy who seems to symbolize what a man is, and this is what I should try to inspire to be. So I'm quite sure we're going to hear more about it. They won't have a problem if he don't win no games. They no. won in four. So <laughs> yeah. we'll be back with That's more it. Sports Shock Show right after this. Kill racism. Don't go away. More of the Sports Jock Show with Wayne Gandy is coming up next. The odds of a young girl being discovered by an industry insider while singing to herself pumping gas? One in 300 million. The odds of the daughter of a clergyman from Severn, Maryland spending 11 weeks at number one on the U.S. singles charts? One in 19 million. The odds of going on to win six Grammy Awards? One in 1.4 million. The odds of selling over 40 million records? One in 800,000. The odds of this musician and performer having a child diagnosed with autism? One in 110. I'm Tony Braxton. 
and I encourage you to learn the signs of autism at AutismSpeaks.org. Early diagnosis can make a lifetime of difference. Autism Speaks. It's time to listen. Brought to you by Autism Speaks in the Ad Council. And now, now, now back to the sports job. Wayne Gant. Welcome back to the Sports Jock Show. I'm the Sports Jock, Wayne Gandy. And uh, for you that are watching on Ustream, you know, I, I would love to say I told you Big Kenny was in disguise, but uh, someone has ran by the studio. <laughs> One of the fastest women that's ever walked the planet is here, and we are glad to have her here. Uh, and she's sporting and showcasing. She is showing the sports jock something that he has never seen. Uh, Miss Lauren Williams is sitting in the studio. Thank you for coming by. It is good to be here as always. We have an official gold medal, Lady T. I know. I was so excited. I was like, Lord, you know I love you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But let me see that gold medal. Because I had never seen one here. before, um, you know, ever in life. How, that's first, incredible. First of all, um, have you gotten your uh, IRS statement? Because don't y'all have to pay taxes on I've your been medals? hearing a lot about this taxes that has to be paid. Okay, don't, 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 don't incriminate yourself because that didn't sound like you had paid it. So, <laughs> it really. <laughs> Stop right there. <laughs> don't let me get you in trouble. Uh, it's yeah, not April the 15th yet. Well, that is true. This is a new gold medal. Right, You're right. right. You got it. You got it down to a science. Mm-hmm. How heavy is that? metal i don't know heavy it's not heavy at all it is very heavy is my it? neck hurt a little bit actually i heard that yeah i had to cinch it up so you could see it in the cinch um, it up cinch it now, uh, now how do you spell that c-i-n-c-h-i-t cinch it cinch it okay. <laughs> i cinched it, it, it. <laughs> what makes you run through town um, just here to hang out a little bit. It's the off season, downtime. Mm-hmm. You know, I had to come say hi to you guys in person, live and in living, living color. I appreciate that. Happy, happy belated birthday. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Somebody 29. 29. What did you do for your birthday? Um, I was in D.C. actually. I had dinner with some friends and just chilled a little bit. Okay. What, did you buy yourself anything? Week one of the Ravens game uh, the night before, Monday night. Uh-huh. My birthday was on Tuesday. Oh, okay. Okay. Did you do anything? Like, did you buy yourself something for your birthday? Did you, like, do no, something? No, I got some free dinner, you know, stuff like that out of my friends. But <laughs> <laughs> I didn't buy you myself anything. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, sometimes, especially if you're the breadwinner in your life, um, you have to kind of treat yourself to things for your birthday because, or at least for me, um, people show up with like socks and mm, no, um, that's so pitiful. Ties, really, and really stuff bad. Like I'll that stop it. Or, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel bad for you. Right? I don't buy myself nothing. I don't want to so, Lauren, what did you do when when um, the games were over and you came back? Did you celebrate big or did you say? I made it through because, you know, the whole thing is you're going to get four years before you can try it again. So what did you think about this time from last time? Um, It was a totally different experience this time because I was just doing the relay. Um, It was very rewarding for me, though, because having, you know, been a part of the botch handoff the last two times to just be here for the relay, to be able to focus on that and really get my opportunity to go for gold and, you know, for us to get it was, you know, rewarding in and of itself. So how'd you party? So what'd y'all do? We didn't. What? (laughs) It was all. It all happened so fast. You know, the relays were toward the end of the games, and then we still have the rest of the season to go. You know, sure, that's everywhere right. else, you know, Super Bowl happens and it's over. But not for us, track and field. I didn't come home until August the thirty first, and I know the last race was like actually September the fifteenth. So, right. so, yeah. so you say the botch handoff, and you was part of the last two. Um, this time, when the person is running towards you, is that is that in your mind at all? Like, are you? <laughs> Sitting there, like I'm gonna get this stick. I don't care if I don't move one. You know what is what's going through your it mind? Is, do not blow this opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> and it's you know it's a matter of the race is like 41 seconds long, 44 seconds, something like that. So it's just you you don't have time to think. But at the same time, like someone's coming at you, like don't take off too soon, don't leave too early. And you're telling yourself all this, and it's literally a matter of like two or three seconds that you have to really make a game time decision and leave on time, put your hand back, and get the stick. You know between right. the marks. So well, yeah, well, it's pretty did intense. It, you did it like. Right. Um, did you get there any, was no doubt. Did like, you get any looks like from the team? You know, 
No. You know that look, how you know what they thinking and they look like, you that know. girl. <laughs> Don't make me even say there, that to right. you about this. No looks or everybody was just. No looks. They had the utmost faith in me. You they know? better like, If they were feeling some type of way, they did not let me know. Okay. That's right. So when y'all are in the halls, um, you know, because football, we're usually, especially when you get to the pro level, you're in two different ends of the stadium. Um, track, they show all of you coming from like the same area. Are there things said in that walk in that breeze way to do you know I imagine for the guys there is, but for the girls we we're not into smack talking, and I think there would be a lot more fighting if there was smack talking for girls because we don't know how to play that game. you know the guys can just say stuff and go back and forth and you know let's get on here, let's do this and, all, and girls don't really do all that really even and I though think the if Jam- we saw some yeah them acting like that, it might have really got ugly, yeah, so. even though the Jamaicans have kind of dominated us these last two Olympics. There's nothing said? Like, nothing. Really? It is complete silence. You know, we might be thinking, of, you know, amongst ourselves, mm-hmm. but yeah, there's definitely no smack talking across the board. Because. And they don't say nothing either. Nope. It's, I find that I don't know if I can hold it. I just I beat you in the hundred. <laughs> you know, I'm the fastest woman in the world because as she's saying, the yeah. relays especially are at the end. Mm-hmm. So whoever's won the gold in the hundred has already Want it so, I'm but thinking, it takes four people. They don't got four fast people. Then, right, hey. right. I always wondered that. Because were they shocked because the, I think they felt like they were going to do it? That the, the Jamaicans. Um, no, nope. America has way more depth than Jamaica does. Yeah, right? you know they, 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 they the gold seem like from the you know from just their individual when they came into to run the relay. I felt like they look like they think they're going to do something, but they have no idea. It was all business for you us said, this time. I heard that. I heard. I'm glad y'all represented. I was just wondering when that that baton start coming your way. to you? There's looks being how much exchanged, anxiety. Yeah, exactly. Where it are you is. storing this this metal? Well, it's been traveling a lot. You know, okay. I've been home. I said I've been to Houston. I've been to DC. I've been to Philly. Uh, just everywhere I go, uh, it that's goes. A, that's a I good answer because Lady T was <laughs> had some things on her mind right about where she could <laughs> steal it from. We'll be back with more, more Lauren Williams <laughs> right after this break. <laughs> More of the Sports Jock Show with Wayne Gandy coming up next. Hey, Dad, how do you throw a curveball? How do you build a fort? How do refrigerators run? How do fish learn how to swim? Kids ask a lot of questions. How high can you jump? But you don't have to know every answer. How many phone numbers are there? Because you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. How do cell phones work? There are thousands of children in foster care who don't need every question answered. What's electricity? They just need you. What's the moon made of? For more information on how you can adopt, go to AdoptUSKids.org. A public service announcement from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Adopt US Kids, and the Ad Council. And now, back to the sports jock, Wayne Gandy. But right now, shout it. You looking like money. I'm talking about real money. Huh? Yeah. My chick bad looking like a bag of money. My chick bad looking like a bag of money. I go and get it and I let her count it for me. Welcome back to the Sports Jock Show. I'm the Sports Jock Wayne Gandy. Rick Ross in this song is not talking about our guest, Miss Lauren Williams, because she can count her own money. I need to get on your wish list so you can buy me something for my birthday. It's February the 10th. I know. I'm, he- I'm here. I'm tired of the socks. Getting stuff from other the t- people, so don't yeah, worry. I got socks, you. I ties. got you. What you need? You want Bentley for your birthday? Hmm. I'm gonna get yeah, my friend would, to get. I'm not get even one gonna sit here. You, I'm not. E- your friend is just I'm gonna get one for it. me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, I got uh, you. Well, you. You know, he was saying uh, he likes gifts that people haven't already given him. Sports Jock owns a Bentley, so oh. you might want to <laughs> try and get That's him a little something different. That's why don't nobody get him nothing. He's balling already. Why don't you ask me what I want, Lauren? Why don't you ask me what I want for my birthday? All I want for my birthday is a big booty. And we got that in here. Uh, anybody that's listened to the show knows that I kind of low key got the, the electronic crush on Lauren from the pictures that I've seen. And she came in here thick as peanut butter this morning. I'm like, what? Where do they do that? Hey. When you got it, you got it. What hey, and say? definitely, darling, you got it. You got it. But Kenny, what do you think about the gold medal? Have you uh, ever seen one before, like in person? Let me tell you, man. One of the things that I thought when I first saw the gold medal is 
I've always imagined myself to be somewhat jaded. I've been a lot of places I've seen and done just about everything. This is an experience that I've never had until today. And I'm impressed. I'm I'm proud. It's a whole lot of emotions that goes with meeting an Olympian that has won a gold medal and actually touching the medal. It is really, really heavy. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's a fantastic experience. Thank you for sharing this with us. And it's something that I'll cherish for the rest of my life. It, how often do you? I met one other Olympian, uh, Rowdy Gaines, right. some many, War many Eagle. years ago. Uh, War, War Eagle. Eagle. Yeah, oh, right. Rowdy. <laughs> um, and look, look at that. The, the six <laughs> degrees of separation. We always come back to where we start. Right. But uh, it's a fantastic, fantastic opportunity. Thank you for coming in. And I have met some, you know, like he said, some Olympians as well. I never met them and saw their gold medals though right and it is very very impressive and you know playing sports i'm used to the trophies and all that but to actually see it like big kenny is saying uh it's much more detail than i thought when you look at it on tv it just looks like a gold symbol right, right. here you can even from this distance you see the olympic uh circles i can read it it's clear um it's something to be proud of and we're proud of you and we're happy that you will even come here and show on our show something like that because a lot of people don't even get other than you know the NBA I mean uh, NBC Today show right. and stuff and, <laughs> and they get people like that but and, hey and trust me gentlemen uh for Lauren to walk into a room and the first thing you notice is the medal. Hey, that's, <laughs> that's an impressive medal. It had to be go. I mean, bronze, you'd have been like, ooh, she thick. Is that a medal on her chest? You know what I'm saying? But, but well, go, definitely you go to that first. Well, Lauren, let me ask you, do you follow, still follow your Hurricane football team? Uh, yeah. Or do you follow any pro team? Is there an NFL? You know, it's NFL I'm a season. Baltimore Raven, yes. Uh, and is that because you're – what is, it's a what's long your story, but to summarize it, that's how I learned to watch the game of football. My boyfriend was an all-star, you know, my little small town in Pennsylvania, and I didn't like to watch football. So I used to ask my friends, like, what do you do? Oh, in the third quarter, he got a touchdown. And I said, oh, you look great in the third quarter, you got a touchdown. You know, like, I didn't know what was going oh, on. Oh, so you were just regurgitating? <laughs> yes, <literally laughs> regurgitating. That's and, real support there, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> But all my friends, like I said, in, in small town Pennsylvania, were right outside of Pittsburgh. Football is everything, and I was the only person that wasn't interested. So they said, pick a team, start to watch, and I guarantee you'll get addicted. You'll start to love the game. I picked the Ravens because they were purple. This is 1999. They won the Super Bowl in 2000. So I figured I picked the right team, and I've been ride or dying oh, ever since. You, it, it's blasphemy. I, in Pittsburgh. From I Pittsburgh. Know. And th there is no other, there's no heated rivalry any bigger. Then it's a true hate thing. When it comes to it's, 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 it's the power of the purple sports, Jackie. You got it. Hey, the power of the purple. I didn't know. Wow, that, you shouldn't tell a lot of people that when you go to Pittsburgh. Yeah, but they I'm still a show love. Fan. They still show love. Even like you know, a lot of Steelers and stuff. And they make sure they look out for me when I'm in town, things like that. But yeah, I don't. I just, I didn't it's just know. love the Ravens. But huh? yeah, I can't just change my allegiance okay. back to Pittsburgh. I thought it would have like, been the, the that y'all have a lot of the Ravens have a lot of and Miami guys. We do guys have like five hurricanes on, the, on the team right now, right? Yeah, I so. thought that would have been it. But you're saying it's the color. It's such a it woman started answer. With the color, but there's so <laughs> you do know that's a real woman's answer. I love <laughs> you for that. But I'm a watcher of the sport now. Like, but I, I love can, you for I can that because you stuff about football now. No, you know how in your in your sport there's a lot of speculation of women and being you know. The other alternative. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you making an answer like that showed that you were pure woman. That you love purple. Mm -hmm. and they guys were running purple. around in purple uniforms is wonderful. Yes, <laughs> right. So, <laughs> big kitty, don't don't know, go I get mean, that purple suit. You, I, got, I, 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 know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Being a member of the illustrious Omega Psi Phi Fraternity <laughs> Incorporated with your we, purple folder. Yeah, we, you got you, we got purple everything. <laughs> now that I know that's your groove. <laughs> I'll you already ready for that. I'll be looking like Barney next show. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Lauren. Let's sing a song. <laughs> well, thank you for coming in town and visiting us. It's so good to be here. And uh, when's your next race? When is track season's over? Yes, it's the off season now. We got about two more weeks of downtime before I have to start tightening up, get ready for fall training, and mm. by the end of January, <laughs> indoor season will start. So. You can't use word like tightening up. Hey, an indoor and season. I'm telling because I'm trying to train with you, Lauren. You know what I mean. <laughs> and indoor season starts in January. Yeah, January. Okay. Well, good luck with that. Definitely, and, I'll um, keep you guys posted. Thank you for showing us a gold medal. Mm -hmm. It's a great experience. And everything else. No. <laughs> <laughs> Olympian Miss Lauren Williams in the house with the Sports Jock Show. We are proud to have her here. Uh, we're going to go to break, and when we come back, um, I think I know what I want to talk about. Uh, you'll be gone. Lady T will be back, so I know. I, I, 
And thank you for the silence. You know, Lady T has all that bickering. <laughs> it's so peaceful to have something like that. But we'll Continue be back. I do have a topic you guys need to put on your show. What is that? About the cheerleaders. How much money they make. We'll be back with some of that. <laughs> More of the Sports Jock Show with Wayne Gandy coming up next. Everybody, let's go, let's go. Ho, ho, ho. Welcome everyone to West High School Spring Fling. Hey, where we at? Where we at? All right, I've gone through all the tracks. Just move through the beats. Do your thing. All right, everyone, let's hear it for West High's own Brooke Turner, a.k.a. DJ Hook. Scratching at my first school dance takes confidence. <laughs> So we're getting into college. I've got what it takes. Okay, I went through the practice sessions. I slept good. I feel good. We will now begin the test. Please take out your pencils. I got this. We're all good at something. Maybe it's breakdancing or skateboarding or video games. Whatever you're good at, you had the skills to make it happen. And those same skills will help us get to college. Visit knowhowtogo.org to learn what you should be doing right now to prepare for college. Start taking the steps at knowhowtogo.org. I've got what it takes. So do you. Brought to you by the American Council on Education, Lumina Foundation, and the Ad Council. And now, 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 now back to the sports job. Wayne Gant. Welcome back to the Sports Jock Show. I'm the Sports Jock, Wayne Gandy. Uh, we once again like to thank Miss Lauren Williams for second, stepping into the studio and helping us out. Welcome back, Lady T. Hey, hey, hey. Uh, <laughs> there go that voice again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hey, Lady T. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Glad you she back. back. Yeah, I'm glad I know, you, you like big booties and uh, gold, I know. And I cannot lie. <laughs> <laughs> These <laughs> other brothers can't deny <laughs> Well, speaking of big booties, and uh, Miss Lauren Williams says she wanted to talk about cheerleading. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll get maybe to that. We we'll have to do a little research on what cheerleaders make. Uh, but there is a new bikini basketball league that is starting. Shall I leave the mic now? Because someone uh, listens to the sports somebody. jock show, <laughs> and they heard us talking about why nobody goes to the WNBA games, and right. they came out with a bikini basketball. Bikini league. basketball. Let me hold on, Lady T. Uh, there's the the Chicago Desire. Yeah. The Oakland, I mean the Orlando Lady Cats. Mm. That one's kind of whack compared yeah. to the other names. The Los Angeles Ice. Yeah. I can dig that one. So you, you like the Desire... Desire is just a ba- basically when you're in a swimsuit playing basketball. That that's a fitting name is all I'm saying. But Lady, Lady Cats, Cats, you're not really with no, that. No, that just looks like that sounds like the Tennessee Vols. I mean, the Los know. Angeles Ice, you kind of boo. Or, I'm okay. Yeah. I'm halfway Man, there. Kinda, they might be cold blooded chicks. That's I mean, what they mean. I mean, in oh, Hollywood, you could have came up with a better. I do agree. Than the Ice, the Hollywood Hotties, or something. Sure, something like, like that. that. They're gonna like get that. it. Yeah. yeah. Okay, Miami Spice. Yeah. I mean, I that does make you laugh. I guess the Miami. That makes you laugh, though. The Miami Spice. Though. I imagine them playing in in like uh, neon suits with no socks. And but it's, you know, it goes with it goes. It's in the same vein of mm-hmm. um, you know chauvinistic issues. Go the ahead. New York knockouts. Oh, uh-huh, I thought I thought they were right. going to say like the New York Knockers or something. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say now that's appropriate, but once again, disappointed by the marketing people. The New York Knockouts. Are you for that, Lady T? Yeah, I, that goes along. And the Atlanta Fleet Angels. Garbage. Garbage. Right. Name. Absolute Fleet with Angels. all of the fleet. strip clubs in Atlanta. Sure, that's how they to came up with it. a Fleet Angels name. Yes, it should have been uh, mm-hmm. the Atlanta Next. Booty's on duty. <laughs> <laughs> so that's seventeen. Been the ATL booty clap. <laughs> the Atlanta pole professionals. <laughs> seven teams, six. The cities. Atlanta asses. I don't know. What can we say that? Uh, they said, where you just <laughs> did now. It's out there now. Sure, why not? Uh, they said they're trying to capitalize, you know, because the lingerie football league, for what it is, has had some success, and uh, as Big Kenny did say when CJ was sitting here and asked us why men don't watch WNBA we said if you were more provocative and had better looking women men would t- tune in do you think this league will survive let's see let's say five years 
Okay, first of all, I, I have a question before I answer any questions. Really quick. Have you watched any of the football? Can they play? Hold on, hold on, hold on. I just want to know. Can I asked you play? a question. You asked me a question. Because before I answer it, I just want to <laughs> ask you, can we they play? We don't care about their sporting ability. Yeah, I, I just don't care what we can do. We, could, we could go watch the WNBA if we cared about how they played. So yeah. so is it, So it? would it make it better or worse if they could or couldn't play the game, or does it not even matter? This is strictly that. As they jog up and down the court, the bikini is going to rise and give me a G-string effect. And I'm sure, quite but sure. But does it make it better if they could play or not? No, I won't even know if the ball going in the bucket anyway. <laughs> then, of course, yeah. they're going to last five years. Yes, they're going to last five years. <laughs> you you answered I'm, all my questions correctly. And if we can get us a Janet if Jackson I'm, moment, <laughs> hey, I'm going to buy season to. tickets. The, I'm just saying. If I the, get league, the league will last five years. The men will last about one quarter. And then, <laughs> then we'll be sleep on the sidelines like, yeah, I'm, I've done all I need to do. Just, yeah, 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 so There'll be a lot of tissue in the stands. That's all I know. <laughs> I don't even go to touch yeah, that. As, I'm, as I'm, I'm sitting about. here holding tissue, I don't know what that, you know, they catch me wiping my hands with wipe tissue. Yeah, Bikini that. basketball. Watch your hands, you're going to be wiping. At a arena near you, Atlanta Fleet. These chicks are not I got to go to opening day, though. We, I got to go to opening night. They're not going to be able to play. <laughs> what do you think the cheerleaders She keeps going back like? to the, they can't play. Like, can y'all start wearing shorter shorts back in basketball? We'll be, can I see some legs, we'll, please? We'll be back. Jesus. For more of the Sports Jock Show. I'm never going nowhere, so don't try me. My music sticks in fans' veins like an ivy. Flows poison like ivy. Oh, they grimy. Already open. Don't go away. More of the Sports Jock Show with Wayne Gandy is coming up next. Hey, Dad, how do you throw a curveball? How do you build a fort? How do refrigerators run? How do fish learn how to swim? Kids ask a lot of questions. How high can you jump? But you don't have to know every answer. How many phone numbers are there? Because you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. How do cell phones work? There are thousands of children in foster care who don't need every question answered. What's electricity? They just need you. What's the moon made of? For more information on how you can adopt, go to AdoptUSKids.org. A public service announcement from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Adopt US Kids, and the Ad Council. And now, 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 back to the sports job. Wayne Gant. And we hold the world ransom for... Excuse me while I whip this out. Show me that. Broadcasting live from the Armada FM studios in Atlanta, Georgia. This, this is the Sports Chuck Show with Wayne Gandy. Welcome back to the Sports Jock Show. I'm the Sports Jock, Wayne Gandy. I love when the good producer looks at that clock. He's always trying to see if I'm in on time. <laughs> I tell you, boy, he's so principled over there with them sparkly jeans on. What 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 brand is that? Let me see. There you go, walking by. That's Oregon Duckwear. 49 years old and got on some... That's that Oregon <laughs> Duckwear. You'll look fabulous, good producer. You'll be a great producer today. <laughs> <laughs> well, believe it or not, it's October the 1st. And uh, with college football going on, the NFL reaching its second month of the season, the NBA is back. Uh, for right. most of us who um, remember last year with the lockout, the season didn't kick off to December. Um, this year, everything's... Ready, set, go. So training camp is uh, started for most teams this past weekend. Uh, we even have a preseason game here in Atlanta. The first preseason game is Sunday over at Phillips Arena. Who are we playing? The Heat. Oh. Uh, playing the Heat to kick it off, which I'm quite sure. Uh, Braun and them <laughs> coming to town. I'm quite sure that Braun. He, he might not do preseason. It's, it's, it's said that he might sit out yeah. this game. Run. I know D Wade is coming back from a knee surgery, so he probably will not participate in the preseason at all. Um, but basketball season is here, mm -hmm. and later on we're going to see. Um, there was some articles out. Should basketball keep with the short season? How would that you know? Because seemed like it did. Its ratings went up, 
and people always said maybe they shortened the season, not necessarily to 55 games, but took a couple off to make the games have a little more weight um, and to stop competing with football. I was going to say that might be the only thing I could think would be beneficial. Yeah, most people don't even know basketball is going on the first month and a half. That's because y'all assume everybody's a football fan first. Not necessarily true. Yeah, if I'm going to open up a sports bar, I'm going to open it up around football. I'm not going to open it. Excuse me, that's the truth. <laughs> Lady that's because you are a football player. If I was going to open a sports bar, it would be a tennis sports oh. bar. And it would go bust Bus. in the first <laughs> week. In the first week, it would go bust. I didn't say bust. I was going to. I was just saying in theory. Yeah, your own family uh, wouldn't come there. Sure, They'd be like, ain't nobody here. I don't want them in my house. There's no problem with them I, not coming to my restaurant. <laughs> Interestingly enough, though, in my very travels this weekend, I saw a golf sports bar. It was dedicated to the game of golf. And I guess because of the Ryder Cup, there were like three people there <laughs> actually watching the game in this sports bar. And uh-huh. I suppose they closed down the rest of the year because right. I just don't see golf being the type of sport that could support a sports bar. Yeah, unless it has some beds and there's some naps in or yeah, something. Yeah, something like that. Because it's not just about golf. You should be able to go there and watch any sport. Come on, people. It's but, just that it, it might have been but themed it's dedicated behind golf. To golf. Whatever, go ahead. What were you saying about basketball? That's the number one thing about sports bars, alcohol. Alcohol is synonymous with football. Right. What? Let me tell you something. Have you been on a golf course? They have that little cart that drives around. I have emptied that cart off out of beer every single time I have ever gone golfing. I mean, golfing well, and drinking is AA. straight up. <laughs> Look, that's why I mean, Charles Barkley <laughs> golfs. That's why Michael Jordan golfs. No, they golf to get away from their other hands. See, and, and that's and what I'm saying. Drink, and, and the and women drink. drink way and they more have to, when they're married. So they yeah, you're, proving, you're proving so many things that yeah. we say, ladies. Well, I'm trying to help y'all out. <laughs> <laughs> you trying to help Ike? You trying to help but, Ike? <laughs> the NBA season is kicking off. Um... Magic Johnson is doing something great here in Atlanta over at South DeKalb Mall. He's opening up a program called Bridge Escape um, where he's getting people back to try to get their high school diplomas. Mm. Uh, he's supposed to open up, I think, this weekend over at South DeKalb Mall. Uh, that's off of I-20, correct? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> Both of y'all looking. Have y'all ever been to uh, South DeKalb Mall? Yeah, yeah, that's why I'm going. That's an odd place. But well, I guess if you're going to get some dropouts, that would be a that's good place to go find them. I, I uh, live by Linux, so that's where I <laughs> So he's uh, no it's reason open to go to Stonecrest. For people uh, 14 to 20 that want to finish their degree or go back to school. Kenny, or here's your chance. Go on over to get my high school diploma. <laughs> <laughs> So I thought I that's would That's good let, stuff. That's good stuff. Magic giving yeah. back to the community. He's a great dude. So and, I won't mention uh, the fact that they was just on the blog about cheating on his wife. But that's so just because he's doing good stuff, I'm gonna leave that out. Wait, not, a minute, wait, a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I, just, minute, I said I was gonna minute. leave it out. No, no. I'm saying he's cheating on his wife. Well, so you mean there's a I chick out there still willing to go in it. with Magic Johnson? Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> They're thirsty. They're thirsty. Money changes everything. Them condoms are super condoms. But I'm saying you 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 like to bring us stuff like we're gonna be shocked. <laughs> you, you throw things out there like Magic Johnson. Well, Magic has been clean, technically, uh, you know, for a while. And I was just saying that he is in the blogs <laughs> recently for <laughs> tipping on his wife. What does that mean he's been clean? Like yeah, he, I'm, I'm he went into rehab or something like that. What is he? <laughs> well, because there, there's offenders and then there's p- public offenders. You know what I mean? Where there's people who you know are behind the do- closed doors or whatever. You know what's going? things are going on. But then there's people who are just blatantly <clears> caught <throat> out there, busted all the time, in trouble. And then they have to head back their wife. And everybody knows about mm-hmm. it. Sure. It's see, right. you know, you see. The so difference. we, we, you want to spoil? See, it's just like a woman want to spoil stuff. I, I tell you I that this man, he, this man has set up a free <laughs> I'm just place, program. program so people can get their diploma, and you want to salt his game. I did uh, with I some bet speculation. He, I said I wasn't going to. He's just salt doing it. it to meet young girls. <laughs> yes. I tell anyway, you. Anyway, you need to watch the a... SEC pre-show with <laughs> Sports Jack Wayne Gandy on Friday, CBX Forty Six, eleven fifteen. That's what you need to do. There you go. I'd say. We'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> More of the Sports Jock Show with Wayne Gandy coming up next. Psst. Hey, over here. Um, what? Right here, on the side of the house. Who said that? Look down. I'm right at your feet. Wait, the basketball? Yes, the basketball. Right down here, where the kids left me a long time ago. 
Man, you know how lonely it is being a ball and not being able to bounce or roll? Excuse me? Remember when you got me for the kids? You said, now kids, you have no excuse not to go outside and play. Uh Uh-huh. Wow. I'll miss flying through the air and hearing the shouts of joy when I swish through the basket. What do you say? Could you give me a little air and remind the kids of how fun I still am? Okay. Oh, wow. You are flat. (laughs) Easy. I'm ticklish. Let's get bouncing. As Native American parents and caregivers, our encouragement to healthy lifestyles for our kids is helping them get outside and play. Get ideas. Get involved. Get going at letsmove.gov slash Indian Country. Brought to you by USDA, HHS, and the Ad Council. And now, back to the sports John Wayne Gandy. trying to go home, all of my change I spent on you. Where are the times gone, baby, it's all wrong. Where are the plans we made for two? Yeah. Welcome back to the Sports Jock Show. I'm the Sports Jock, Wayne Gandy. And as we went to break, we were talking a little NBA. And when we like to talk the NBA, we talked to Sekou Smith. NBA.com, NBA TV. Sekou, are you there? I'm here. How you doing, big fellow? Man, thank you for calling in. I mean, it's been a tough show for Big Kenny, Lady T, and myself. Uh, you're about the only thing other than Lauren Williams that has gone right today. Mm-hmm. I, I'm, I'm looking if you got any coworkers looking for a part time job. I got some work over here. Uh, just give them my number because I'm looking for two new producers. Uh, I was just looking for one when the show started, but I've added the other one. Uh, it's hard, man. You know, it's hard. Like they say, it's hard finding good work, good workers. Um, mm-hmm. But thank you for calling in. Though. I had to get that off my chest real quick. Uh, NBA training camp has started and we're going to start out in LA and just the new look Lakers, the Geritol team. Um, <laughs> tell me your impressions of what the Lakers went from and what they are today. Well, I mean, I don't think there's any question. That's where everybody's attention starts, Wayne. Um, you know, you want to see if, if this team with a, with a core group, uh, you know, stars whose average age is 32 years, is capable of challenging the Heat, you know, and, and really the Thunder um, in terms of championship potential. I think so many questions lingering around Dwight Howard's health and how, you know, how his back is going to respond after that surgery and after being inactive for so long. Uh, you know, and the guy who really nobody's talking about is Steve Nash, you know, and the fact that it's going to be a responsibility of his and really Mike Brown's uh, to make sure that this is – a team that he's orchestrating as opposed to what the Lakers have been used to for years and that's a team that Kobe Bryant is is basically dictating to um, they have too much talent for them to play they, with the way they've played with Kobe the past few years and come up sh- as short as they have in the playoffs. And real quickly how big of an impact will Steve Nash the point guard? Well I think huge if, if, if Kobe allows him to you know it's going to be a very delicate relationship that they have to balance uh, between Kobe wanting to, you know, exert him, his personality and his leadership over that team, and whether or not you're going to let Steve Nash do what he does best, and that's just set the table for other star players to to play at their best. Steve Nash has taken some of the, you know, an interesting mix of players and turned them into, you know, productive guys. He's he's been able to play with stars, you know, Amari Stoudemire and you know Joe Johnson, who who was you know became a star, a bigger star after he left Phoenix, but really played some of his best basketball with Nash and Phoenix. And then he's taking other guys like Jared Dudley and Channing Fry and opened some eyes and, you know, made you see how effective they can be when they're playing with a guy who sets them up the way he does. So it's a lot of what they do is going to be based on how much freedom Steve Nash has to do what he does best. So we're going to go from L.A. We're going to travel about 2,500 miles and make it to Madison Square Gardens and the Knicks. Now, before you say anything... Um, I'm watching this Nick team. You know we have Carmelo. You know we have Tyson Chandler and those outfits that he wears. Uh, we got Amari Stoudemire. Now, I'm going to go out and I'm going to add Jason Kidd, 38. Rasheed Wallace, 38. Marcus Canby, 38. Um, Kurt Thomas, 40. Uh, 
Come on, man. I mean, really? Am I going to really <laughs> run LeBron down with 40 years old? I feel great today. I, I'm not going to tell you a lie. <laughs> but after about two trips down the court, uh, hey, man, y'all pick him up. I'll be pointing to the guy in front of me. You get it. <laughs> you <got> it. <laughs> this is what Mike Woodson and the Knicks are going to go with. Yeah, I mean, and it, it does seem to, to kind of fly in the face of, of what's, what's been successful the past few years. But, you know, there, there's a line of thinking that, you know, you win championships with veterans, and, and sometimes the veterans are 26 and 27 years old, you know, when they all came into the league as high schoolers. Um, you know, the Knicks are trying to to beat that curve, you know, with, with, a, with a squad that's getting a, AARP cards in the next couple of years. And um, I don't know if it's going to work, but I know if you're talking about players that fit a coach in, in, a, in the way he likes to play, what he likes those vets, you know, he likes to have a, a group of veteran guys. He's never really, you know, shown himself to be one that trusted young guys with running his team. So I'm I'm not surprised to see them go out and get the kind of guys who fit the mold he likes. the The problem the Knicks are going to have to me is they don't have the luxury of time, and you know, uh, they don't have that that buffer to, to sort out their chemistry the way some other teams might. They have to be good. And in your and that's always going to be an issue that you know that have that extra amount of time to really get themselves set that some other teams might have. Hey, Seku, it's Lady T. How are you? I'm good. How you doing? Good. Um, uh, right before you came on, uh, Sports Jock was talking about um, shortening the NBA season because of the results of the excitement when everyone b- went back to the season um, in December. What do you? What's your take on that? Should they make it a shorter season and not compete with football, or is it should it stay the way that it's always been? No, I, I actually I agree 100. percent And I've said I've been saying that for years long before the lockout. I, I feel like you know. Uh, a 65 game season to me would be plenty. Um, you would cut down on that first month and a half of the season really being lost in the ether. You know, I know people who just flat out don't tune in and watch NBA games until the playoffs, mm-hmm. let alone, you know, competing with NFL games and, and college football, you know, in Atlanta and places, you know, here around the Southeast. And it's just so much stuff competing for your attention. I think you give the NBA a, a grand stage kicking things off on Christmas every year will be a fantastic way to start the season and uh, you know you build the excitement towards the playoffs and then you know you have fresh teams and and fresh players uh, come playoff time now that's not to say that you can't pace yourself over an 82 game season but but I agree I I just think that you know if you have a chance to to heighten the intensity of your own season sometimes shorter is better it really is Mm mm-hmm Seku, this is Big Kenny. Uh, the season's getting ready to start. We just talked about a couple of teams that are aging. Which coach is on the hot seat this season? If they don't win this year, they are out of there. Oh, well, I think L.A. is coaching hot seat central. Um, you know, between Vinny Del Negro and Mike Brown, you know, the expectations are going to be so huge for both of those teams. Um, you know, Mike Brown had kind of an uneven start last year with the Lakers. A lot of dust-ups with Andrew Bynum. You know, a lot made of all the stuff that they went through. Um, you know, Vinny Del Negro is always going to be, you know, kind of in, in in everybody's sights as a guy who's some people feel, you know, is coaching over his head. But he did that in Chicago, and they certainly feel he's doing the same with the Clippers. But I think those two guys in particular will will really have to be watched. And then you got to look at some of these first year guys, particularly Jock Vaughn down in Orlando. Man, he's he's jumping into a really tough situation with no Dwight Howard and all the, you know, everything new, 12 new players, brand new GM, you know, and, and I think the expectations down there, obviously not in, near anything that they're like in LA, but you have to look at Jock Vaughn and ask yourself, you know, is he ready for this? And, and if not, you know, how does that turn out with a team filled with some, some veterans, you know, in Orlando that can really blow things up if they don't play well this year. Mm-hmm. And we can't go without mentioning the NBA champs. Uh, the Heat, they have the crown. Uh, they basically have the same team. They've added uh, two veterans themselves, uh, Ray Allen and um, what's my man named the forward? We're trying to see. Oh, Rashard he... Lewis. Yeah, Rashard, I don't know those guys L- Friday, man. Huh? Rashard Lewis. Um, yeah. Is Rashard healthy again? Uh, because in my opinion, if there's a healthy Rashard Lewis, 
for what he can bring being kind of like a little swing man the heater uh are, are prompt to be the champion again yes I, I was i was there friday and um and i went to their media day and talked with all those guys and uh, listened to eric supposed to talk about his team and how they want to play positionless basketball which it sounds radical until you remember that Isaiah Thomas was saying the same thing with Indiana Pacers a decade ago. You know, um, it's, it's kind of this revisited theme that, that coaches always do every few years where they want to reinvent the game. Um, but they got the pieces to do whatever they want, really. And and Ray and Rashard both look healthy. Uh, Dwayne Wade is on the men, but is you know it's getting healthier. Chris Bosh is healthy. Um, you know, and LeBron James is is the you know is the man right now. So they. I have a hard time seeing them being knocked off by anybody in the East. I don't I don't see a team in the Eastern Conference capable of knocking them off. So it really comes down to the Lakers and the Thunder to me out west. Between those two, can they get themselves together in time to to, to beat the the Heat? And I don't know that they can do it. But I but I think the additions they've made in Miami, particularly Ray Allen and Rashard Lewis, make them a much different team than what we saw at the end of the season last year. LeBron talked about them being scary potentially on paper. And I agree with him. I think if if they're healthy and those two guys, they don't have to play up to their all-star form from five, six, seven, eight years ago. They just need to be effective in whatever roles that, you know, they make for them on this team. And I think that he definitely go into the season as the, the favorite to win it again. And real quickly before we go, we have to ask you this because we talked about it uh, a couple of minutes ago. Uh, women's Bikini Basketball League, Seku. <laughs> um, you know, just real quick, give me about – 15 seconds do you see will you be there can I invite you can me and you go to this game uh we can get season tickets <laughs> hey, uh, <laughs> see that broke lady T's heart she didn't want you to say that no if he didn't say anything I would do, been the, do they about have a take, bikini take basketball food. network that's what I'm saying can we catch yeah, all the games do they need do they need a, do they need a host on the, on the Bikini Network TV. Yeah, we're going to need you to report live from there. We're going to start the Fantasy Bikini League. Well, thank you, Seku, for, for calling in and helping us. Uh, one quick question. We, we're about out of time. Just quickly, yes or no, uh, will the Hawks retain Josh Smith uh, by the end of the year? I think yes, and, and I'm headed to their media day today and uh, hope to get that answer on the record from somebody. All right, Sekou Smith, NBA TV, NBA.com. Thank you for calling in, Sekou. We'll be All back. All right, guys, take care. We'll be back with more of the Sports Jock Show right after this. of the Sports Jock Show with Wayne Gandy coming up next. Psst, hey, over here. What? Right here in the back. Where? Over by the fence. You? The bike? Yeah, the bike. Right in the grass where the kids left me a while ago. You know how lonely it is being left day after day, not being able to cruise the reservation? Pardon me? Remember when you got me for the kids? You told them, no, you kids go have fun. Enjoy the outdoors and be careful. Mm, yeah? I really miss it. Especially when they put that playing card in my spokes and I made a really cool sound the faster we went. Um... Well, could you get my tires a little air, dust off my seat, and remind the kids how fun I still am? Okay. <coughs> oh, you are dusty. Yeah, and I may need a couple of bolts tightened, too. Now let's go. As Native American parents and caregivers, our encouragement to healthy lifestyles for our kids is helping them get outside and play. Get ideas. Get involved. Get going at letsmove.gov slash Indian Country. Brought to you by USDA, HHS, and the Ad Council. And now, 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 now back to the sports job. Wayne Gant. Welcome back to the Sports Shock Show. I'm the Sports Shock Wayne Gandy. We'd like to thank Sekou Smith, NBA.com, NBA TV, uh, for calling in, helping with the NBA report. Real quickly, for some of you that might not have understood what Sekou said, he said Miami was trying a new philosophy, uh, positionless basketball. Um, I always thought that's what made the Bulls so great, especially that second time around. Uh, they had four guys on the court that 
just moved around. They didn't have to guard a particular person when they had Harper, Rodman, Pippen, and Jordan. They were all about the same height, same size. So it was easier to play defense because they didn't have to necessarily follow their man everywhere. Sure. I think that's what he's saying with the Heat. They have these parts where LeBron James, just follow the guy that's closest to you. If he's not seven feet tall, follow him. And, you know, it, it helps on defense a lot. And it puts a lot of people out there that can control the ball. Just wanted to clear that up because um, it seems it's radical. But I, the Bulls did do that. A lot of people looked over that. But it's something when I don't have to chase you. I can just let you yeah. go to the next man. Sure. It saves and know that energy. Get covered over yeah, that. all yeah. that kind of stuff. So. That, I actually thought the game was always played like that, but that, whatever. That, 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 takes some, that takes some adjusting, too, though, because you know yeah. there's some dudes out there that even on offense stick real close to that man. You're like, <laughs> you're supposed to be trying to shake this dude, right. and you just. Right. So it, it'll take some Yeah, you got Kobe. I ain't chasing him over there. <laughs> you know, he ain't going to kill me, no. <laughs> That's your man? I'm going to look I for that. that was your man. I'm going to look for that in the game. Oh, uh, NBA. Um, we'll never have to worry about that with some players, though, because, like, for instance, uh, Darren Williams is always going to be only. Baron Davis's man. You know, <laughs> always. What I mean? oh. you know who he got. You <laughs> already know who I know. You know who Baron <laughs> Davis got. Speaking of NBA, we're in the birthday segments. Uh, little kid, Michael Kidd Gilchrist, is 19 years old. He's in the NBA. He got drafted out of Kentucky. Had his 19th birthday. Isn't that Happy funny birthday. just to be saying 19 on an NBA team? And, and he's already played a season. Has, has he already played no, this a season? Oh, he just got drafted. Just got drafted. Okay, wow. Yeah, he won the championship with Kentucky a couple so he's of months a, ago. So he's a millionaire at <laughs> 19. <laughs> he's right. Because <laughs> he was like a top five. Somebody's going to be a baby daddy. <laughs> on the other side of the spectrum, Miss Barbara Walters. Had her 83rd birthday. Wow. And, and you know, at the Grim Reaper convention, her personal Reaper keeps getting up like, look, I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying. She just will not she go. She just won't she go. She just won't go. <laughs> oh, rapper, hip hop, comedian, and everything else in Hollywood, movie star, Mr. Will Smith, had his 44th birthday last week. Go, Will. He's one of my favorite actors. Uh, Catherine Zeta Jones, 43. That's oh. a lie. I think she's older than You're that. Not going with I that? think she's a super cougar. That's it? That's 43? it. That's what I'm saying. No, that's all I think that's all she really mm. is. I mean, Captain Zeta Jones has been married like forty two years, hasn't she? <laughs> no. no. I'm saying this she's been around for a while. She has been around for a while. I feel like while. she's cheating. Slightly. Well, her husband last week had a birthday as well. Mike, Michael Douglas. Now he's his, old as dirt. Yeah, his sixty sure. eighth birthday last week, so he is a real. What do you call a man that's twice your age and you're married to him almost? What is that? You call him Mr. Viagra. He's 25 years He's, older than her. Uh, yeah, you call, call him Mr. Financial Viagra. Financial security. That's what you, <laughs> that's what you call him. Because you're going to need it. Uh, someone who really looks great for their age. I don't know if y'all remember Cheryl Teagues, yeah. the model. She's mm-hmm. right. 65. What? And when you see her in little ads and stuff, she's still. It gives you about 52, 53. So, mm-hmm. Cheryl Teague, 65. On, on the smash meter, uh, 1 to 10, where's Cheryl You can't Teague? smash smash meter over 55. Uh, hey, hey, I'm, I'm saying everybody's smashable. Yeah. The oh, older you get. I'll give her a 7. A seven. Oh, seven. see, I mean, a 7 on the smash meter. That's for, Six, for 50s. You're not going to think while you're doing it that you are sleeping with a 62-year-old woman, somebody's grandmother. Are Cat- you kidding Hold me? Hold on, Catherine Zeta Jones isn't. She, Everybody, she's somebody, grandma, somebody, granddad. <laughs> yes. I'm not giving her a pass either. I mean, Michael Douglas got 45 year old son. A- everybody Listen, related to somebody. And she probably sleeping with him because I promise you, <laughs> she ain't getting nothing from the daddy. Olivia Newton John, 64. Christina Million, 31. Julie Andrews, 77. Christina's man's getting a new, new wife too. But go ahead. She's, then it ain't her man. It ain't no man, <laughs> ain't no man yeah. to be getting a new wife. Gwyneth Paltrow him. celebrated her 40th birthday last okay. week. Okay. Mm. Uh, Andrew Dice Clay, who we haven't heard from in a while. Thank 55 goodness. years old. I'm 55. Oh. I never liked his comedy. Oh. <laughs> uh, Brian Gumble, 64. Uh, T.I. had a 32nd birthday last week. I thought T.I. was a little older. No, homie, you know, I just thought I had aged when I was locked up. <laughs> <laughs> Heather Locklear, 51. Um, Linda Hamilton, 56. 
Lil Wayne had his 30th birthday last week. Yeah, young man. Yeah, he's a you. gremlin. On that skateboard. Yeah. He is. Yes. I he's love gonna, him. One I thing about music. Lil Wayne, though, he's going to always have addict. money because he is totally giving up on dressing. Sure. It's just whatever I was sleeping in last it's night. Truck fit, baby. It's just put that on, <laughs> and we're going out the doors. But the ugly meter is getting worse on Little Wayne, though. God, he looks like his breath stinks. How, he how, looks, he how, just, how he much worse could the ugly meter get on Wayne? He looks like he's maxed out right now yeah, yeah. on the ugly meter. I don't think there's like any more points he can achieve. <laughs> and Avril Lavigne, remember her? I love Andrew. Avril Lavigne. I She's still, 28 I, years old. Wow. Her 28th birthday. She's trying to design clothes or something. When we come back on the next segment, uh, Sports Jock, can I give a shout out? No. No. (laughs) I'm going to do it anyway. Because I don't know who you might be shouting out. It's somebody's birthday. I'm going to do it anyway. It's somebody's birthday, though. Huh? Hunting? No, no, I didn't go I hunting. Said, huh? uh, I got a birthday. <laughs> what's great? My older brother DJ. Happy birthday, bro. Hey, he DJ, what's up, that DJ? Just gave a what it out. is with your pimp? What it do? Oh my! We'll be back man. with more Shout of the Sports out. Talk Show right after this. Next time I won't ask. <laughs> more of the Sports Talk Show with Wayne Gandy coming up next. I'm Ed Smart, father of a child who is abducted. I'm John Walsh. Like Ed, I also know the terror of having a child who was kidnapped. But now we have wonderful technology to aid in this battle. It's called the Amber Alert. It's an early notification system to the public when every second counts. Amber Alert is a partnership. We want to thank you, the public, broadcasters, transportation, and law enforcement. Amber Alert really works. This moment of uncontrollable laughter was made possible by a 32-year-old man with little to no coordination attempting to execute a simple cartwheel. His name is Sergeant Warner, but young James, our laughing friend here, simply calls him Dad. The smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. Call 877-4DAD-411 or visit fatherhood.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. Hi, we're talking to real smokers about quitting. Tell me when you smoke and why you smoke. Eat cigarette, kids, cigarette, dinner, another cigarette. One on my way to lunch, one after lunch. And another cigarette, and another cigarette. Have you tried to quit? Yes. I become angry. It ain't that easy. You can't just quit cold turkey. I tried. What would you do different? Actually having a plan and thinking it through. You have to relearn how to live your life without a cigarette in your hand. With the right plan, you can quit smoking. Free at becomeanx.org. X, a new way to think about quitting. Brought to you by X and the Ad Council. Look around you. One in four kids in the U.S. faces hunger. It's not always easy to see the signs, but in this land of plenty, there are kids who don't know where they'll get their next meal. Join Share Our Strength and take the pledge to end childhood hunger here in America by 2015. Learn how at nokidhungry.org. Their next meal could come from you. And now, 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 now back to the sports job. Wayne Gant. I had a way there. Welcome back to the Sports Jock Show. I'm the Sports Jock Wayne Gandy. I'm sitting here with my co-host, Lady T and Big Kenny. And if you follow the Sports Jock Show, you know the Sports Jock has to break up sports every once in a while to bring you just some real life stories uh, and all the research. You run upon other stories that interest you. Uh, It's not like you're just ignoring those stories, ignoring those stories. Uh, for the sports thing So I grab those stories and I bring them to my two co-hosts Some of them they have heard of Some of them they have not um, I don't know if y'all have heard of this mm-hmm. Story here uh, 49 year old David Vaines uh, Is a chef Okay Out in California Uh oh He Murdered his wife <laughs> Stop Stop. Stop. Her listen, listen. <laughs> if this story is about to go in the direction that I think this story is about to go in, 
I mean, if they serve, uh, if he uh, served them up, Wayne, uh, come on, come, come, go, come ahead, on go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Just bring you the story. I have to give you a little break please, from the please, sports, man. Please go ahead, go ahead. Don Vane's is thirty nine years old. Or she she was thirty nine. Well, she died at thirty nine. He murdered her. She was thirty nine <laughs> years old. <laughs> David did. <laughs> um, he has been convicted of second degree murder out in California. So I do want you to know he has been convicted. Okay. Why are you holding your breath over there, Lady I just, T? you know, it's hard to breathe <laughs> under these circumstances and situations. Um, <laughs> David, as I told you, uh, was a chef, um, or is a chef, or probably will be.